Hey, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're spending the hour with David Simon, the acclaimed television writer, producer. Ten years ago this week, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast, killing more than 1,800 people. David Simon's series, Treme, looked at New Orleans after the storm. This is actor John Goodman playing the character Creighton Burnett, being interviewed by a British television reporter after the storm. What hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast was a natural disaster, a hurricane, pure and simple. The flooding of New Orleans was a man-made catastrophe, a federal f*** of epic proportions and decades in the making. Daddy. We can edit that out, no worries. The levees were not blown, not in 65 and not three months ago. The flood protection system built by the Army Corps of Engineers, a.k.a. the federal government, failed. And we've been saying for the last 40 years, since Betsy, that it was going to fail again unless something was done. And guess what? It was Seriously, not. Seriously, Daddy, you're going to stroke out. No worries, sweetheart. Cool as a cucumber up in Archbishop's The levees weren't blown. The floodgates failed. The canal walls failed. The pumps failed, all of which were supposedly built to withstand a much greater storm. Are you suggesting criminal liability? Absolutely. Find the responsible parties and put them on trial. Corps of Engineers, federal, state, local government, the contractors who use substandard materials, and the goddamn sleazebag politicians that they have in their pockets. That's a clip from Treme, and that was John Goodman playing the character Creighton Burnett, being interviewed by a British television reporter after the storm. That's right, Hurricane Katrina, 10 years ago this week. Your thoughts on where New Orleans is today and what you were doing with Treme? Oh, uh, I think probably people from New Orleans would be better equipped to, to, give, you, to give you an assessment of the city in detail. Um, we did Treme because we— um, I was sort of surprised after The Wire. There were a lot of people who watched The Wire and, and came to the sort of, I thought, myopic conclusion that we were arguing against the city or against good governance in a city or the idea of the city as the American future. There, there was a lot of, wow, Baltimore is messed up. Why don't they move? And, of course, I live in Baltimore um, and uh, uh, moved to where? You know, the, this is our future and we either solve this or we don't. And so I was, re I was really a little bit astonished at some of the um, sort of the neoliberal, uh, libertarian uh, uh, juvenilia uh, uh, that, that greeted uh, that storytelling. And I wanted to make an argument for the city. So here was this place that had been one of America's culturally iconic uh, places, a source of great cultural power in American life, and, and in fact, in, in, the world, in terms of the world. Uh, that had been 80 percent destroyed uh, and now had to come back. Um, and Eric Overmeyer, who lives down there, and I've spent a lot of time down there, we decided to sort of attend to what actually happened after the storm and what seemed to be bringing New Orleans back and what seemed to be working and what seemed not to be working. And so we tried to take careful notes and we tried to follow the actual narrative of what was, you know, what the arguments were and what the struggles were in New Orleans, and we tried to make a show around that. Um, but really, it was an argument for the city. It was saying, you know, look at, look at what's possible. And, 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 and certainly the city is a compacted, multicultural experience, because um, that aspect of, of American urbanity has given the world maybe the greatest gifts we have to offer, you know, jazz, jazz music. I mean, African-American music comes from about 10 square blocks in New Orleans. And if we were wiped off the face of the earth right now, uh, and, and there was nothing left of us but uh, what's on jukeboxes everywhere from, you know, Johannesburg to Timbuktu um, or, you know, Kuala Lumpur. I mean, you know, everywhere you go, wherever you go, there's, there's American music on the, on the juke or in the bar or, or in the shebeen. And, uh, and that's New Orleans. That's the, that's the legacy of New Orleans. And um, that it's one of our great gifts. Um, and it can only happen in a place that is decidedly American, that is, is, a, is a, has the cross currents of European, African, Caribbean culture. Um, it can only happen here. So it was really, it's probably the most patriotic piece I'll ever do, is, is uh, 
Well, like The Wire, you're dealing with New Orleans from every different angle. Um, after Hurricane Katrina, five police officers were accused of shooting and killing two unarmed people and wounding four others on the Danziger Bridge. The officers were convicted in 2011, but the convictions were later vacated. Earlier this month, the federal appeals court ruled the officers are entitled to a new trial. Now, you address the Danziger Bridge in um, in Treme. Indirect. This clip Indirectly. features yeah. New Orleans police officer Terry Colson, played by David Morris. You hear about Mike Hunter? Headquarters rumor mill has the grand jury going after him and the others, like he's lying about Danziger. Yeah. Eddie Jordan's on the hunt, ain't he? Can't bring a damn murder case to court, but this Danziger mess, he's right up our ass. Huh? See the him or a runaway grand jury. For Christ's sakes. I was right there when the shoot to kill looters order came down to district commanders. If you can sleep on it, you can do it. That's what they told us. I know they put that out there even if they won't admit it now. It was a bad shoot. But why lie? All those guys have to do is tell the grand jury we received that order and they followed that order. Anything that happened after that, it might be bad police work, but it ain't illegal. The storm was a mess, you know. And I don't doubt that some bad <laughs> happened. I just... But was there bad intent? We can't look back. We need to deal with it here and now. A clip from Treme. You said loosely based on Danziger Bridge incident. Yeah, I think we, we, we referenced the Danzinger in dialogue because that prosecution was ongoing. Um, but actually, uh, for most of w the way we dealt with that was to do a uh, we did a fictional shooting that was basically uh, comprised of a, details from about five or six different police shootings, either um, during in the immediate aftermath of Katrina. You know, there was a lot of great ProPublica reporting on uh, on what happened in Algiers and, and one of the deaths there. And, and uh, um, clearly, the police department, under great stress during the storm, uh, uh, was involved in, in, in any number of civil rights violations. But to I mean, be, to, in, in to, Algiers, to, we, we were there, and there was a dead body laying in the street, which we filmed. We tried to get every level of authority to come over. I mean, we were right there, and they were passing us on the street. Well, uh, they, they, had, they had a shooting of somebody in Algiers that, of course, became— um, you know, they they wouldn't investigate their own shooting. I mean, that you know, the the, the ProPublica reporting was some of the most astonishing stuff. But you're really dealing with a police department that has a long history of civil rights violations. I mean, I covered a, a police department in Baltimore that certainly has has its problems, um, and I covered it for about 15 years. I, I you know, I have to say, the 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 NOPD as I encountered it, um, there was not a professional ethos. Uh, in the years running up to Katrina, they had a, they had a fundamental problem with civil rights issues, a uh, fundamental problem with execution and cr criminal prosecution, um, and and Katrina hit a very vulnerable police agency that I think in some respects cracked during the storm, uh, and and was not was ill prepared um, for to be under the the great stress of the storm. I, I think it was it was. It, it was it was quite traumatic, and then afterwards um, there was a real reluctance on the part of not just the uh, state and local people to investigate. And actually, I think the state the Louisiana State Police actually did a pretty good investigation of some of the stuff in Algiers. They, they pointed the fingers at some people in the command staff in a, in a notable report, but um, the federal government uh, didn't really get involved in looking at the civil rights stuff until the change of administration. They were really kind of hamstrung until the Obama administration came in, and, and all of a sudden Jim Letton, who had been chasing uh, old Moriel people, th that was his chief prosecution, suddenly he got interested under a Democratic administration in civil rights issues and started looking at some of these shootings. But it was quite belated. It was quite belated. We're going to go to break when we come back. Talk about The Wire, also your meeting with President Obama at the White House and more. Even get into maybe some presidential politics, because one of the candidates uh -oh. is from your city, uh -oh. from Baltimore. Uh -oh. um, this is Democracy Now! We're talking to the journalist, the television writer, best known for creating the HBO series The Wire and Treme, now has a new one out, Show Me a Hero. Um, a longtime reporter at The Baltimore Sun, David Simon, is with us. Stay with us.